Time to focus on an important health issue, a topic every parent really hopes that they may never have to deal with, a child facing kidney failure. For nine years now, doctors at Helen DeVos Children's Hospital have been performing kidney transplants. Today, Dr. Julia Steinke is here with us. She is the medical director of that group, and I think it's remarkable that you've been around performing kidney transplants for almost a decade now, more than a decade. That's right. I, um, the program started in 2003. We did our first transplant in 2005. I joined the program in 2008, and I've been very happy and very blessed to work with the patients and families in West Michigan. You know, you don't hear it very often, but uh, for the patients that you come in contact with, I mean, this is life-saving, the program that we're talking about here. It is. It's very hard for a family to be given a diagnosis, a devastating diagnosis of kidney failure of their child. But to be able to give this life-saving therapy, it's amazing. It's, it, that truly is life-changing. So what do our kidneys do and how do you know? What, what happens when a, a child is experiencing kidney failure? Well, it can be subtle. Um, the kidneys do a lot for our bodies. In addition to eliminating wastes and extra fluid, it also produces the hormones that help our bones stay healthy, um, also stimulates the bone marrow to make new red blood cells. So a lot of time these diseases start very slowly and the children, um, they don't grow well, they don't feed well, usually they're short in stature. Um, and that's usually when it, it starts to become obvious to the family that something's not right. And then your first stop, obviously, is your pediatrician, your primary care physician, and that's really an important relationship that you and your team have worked to establish with, with really providers all over the state. Absolutely. We've had um, patients as far north as Sault Ste. Marie and as far south as Indiana. So that just points to the importance of making sure that that relationship with the pediatrician is so key because we can do the transplant and we can do the follow-up care, but we need to make sure that the pediatrician is very linked in with us because we're going to rely on them to make sure that if there's issues that come up along the way, they contact us to let us know. And what a blessing to have this program right here because as you mentioned, the follow-up, you perform the transplant here and then the follow-up, you're talking about appointments and appointments really initially a few a week and then after that, uh, for a lifetime. Exactly. So the initial time in the hospital with a kidney transplant is seven to ten days and after that they need to be seen three days a week with labs and then we gradually space that out. Um, but the first year is very intense for the family. Eventually they'll get to the point that they only need to be seen once a month or once every few months, but labs every single month for the rest of their life. So talk, let's talk about the evaluation process. Exactly what is, what, what's entailed and encompassed in that process? So the evaluation process is several different blood tests. First, we determine the child's blood type and determine whether or not they have any pre-existing antibodies that could potentially make them reject a kidney transplant. And then we also make sure that the child is vaccinated and has actually responded to their vaccines. And if they have not, then we need to go ahead and give them those vaccines. And that's an important point because they can't have live vaccines after transplant because they could actually become very sick um, after that vaccine. They also need imaging studies that would include ultrasounds of the abdomen, their kidneys, making sure that their blood vessels are nice and open. Um, and also chest x-rays, ultrasounds of their heart, which is called an echocardiogram. Okay, so we've already talked about the need that the child is completely immunized. Are there any other requirements for a child maybe fitting into this program? Is there an age span where they are suitable for this program? So a child needs to be large enough to put an organ into, and it's important to know that the organ that we're putting in is an adult-sized organ. So really the child has to be long enough and that's usually about at least age two. Okay. Um, and then we transplant patients up to age 17, and beyond that point it would be our adult partners that would transplant those kids. Okay, so your contact information, I know that a patient would be referred to or connected with you directly um, through their primary care doctor or their pediatrician, but how would people get in touch with you for more information? So they could call our phone number at 616-267-2400, or they could contact us uh, via web, helendevoschildrens.org forward slash kidney 
and we have transplant coordinators that they could speak to, um, or I'd be happy to speak to those pediatricians or parents themselves. And let's talk about one more reason why it's important that we're all organ donors. Again, it's a life-saving gift. The, we want to avoid dialysis for these kids if possible, and if they have an organ donor, then they can avoid sitting on dialysis, and we want these kids to leave healthy, productive lives and go to college and have families. Have every, kids every, of their own, yeah. Exactly. The chance at a normal life, thank you. What a great program. Oh, thank you. Stay right there, more of 8 West when we come back.